Thank you, sir. All right. Oh, Kara's still. All right, Ann, you're up next here with um, the ACE study. You yes, wanna... thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. The next uh, visitor on our agenda this evening is Rita Trapp with the firm of HKGI, who helped navigate um, a uh, partner plan for a small area known as the Arts, Culture, and Education um, Plan uh, or Area Plan uh, that the city kind of led the way, but with partnership with the White Bear Center for the Arts. Lakeshore Players Theater, Children's Performing Arts, School District 624, and Ramsey County as part of both the Boos Bento Trail extension as well as the Rush Line. Um, so uh, Rita is here this evening. She was able to corral us all to come up with some common values and potential uh, strategies to help um, really distinguish this uh, really kind of a gem that complements our community and really adds an interesting facet that most communities don't have even if they do have a historic downtown. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like me to repeat any of that? <laughs> no, she's just going to throw it over to me and it'll be done. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Rita uh, Trapp with HKGI to walk you through uh, the arts, culture, and education area plan. All right, the slides. Awesome. Well, I, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. I think many of you we met uh, earlier on in the process and I'm happy to present uh, the findings and what we worked with all of the partners. Uh, the, just a second, I'm running it so I can see it and you have the slides. Uh, so uh, it was mentioned what the, the study partners and the number of agencies that were involved. Um, so the different part, uh, arts organizations, yourselves, the school district and Ramsey County. Uh, the common values, if on the next slide, there are a number of common values that were um, pulled together through the conversations. I will talk about the schedule in a moment. And it's a lot of text and we're hoping that you go back and have a chance to really look at all of the slides in detail, but I'm kind of providing that overview of what happened, uh, where we went, some of the strategies that we identified. Uh, but there are a lot of common values that were important to all of the organizations, uh, partly being, the, being welcoming and diverse and equity, really looking at communication, uh, looking at uh, how this fits in with the whole community, how it fits in with downtown, uh, and really trying to celebrate the art in all its different facets, both physically as well as through performance. So there's a number of different values that we used as we looked at the different areas. If we look at the site analysis and opportunities, which is where we began, making sure we all came together with a common understanding of what's been discussed, what we're looking for in the future, we started by uh, trying to understand what was already planned. So obviously the future expansion of the high school, the city-owned wetland area, uh, the future site expansions for White Bear Center for the Art and Hannaville, the future station for Rush Line and the Bruce Vento Trail. As we considered this area uh, and we looked at the priority considerations considerations. Uh, the priority considerations included the connection to downtown. I think we all know that although the Arts District is physically separated by a few blocks, it really is integral um, and needs to be connected to the downtown area. Uh, we also really focused and talked about the fact that connecting the partner agencies or the, the campuses is important. Uh, right now, the way that it was being planned, there was a little bit more isolation as everybody kind of worked on their own plans and I think the conversation really helped the idea that uh, while they did want to have of, um, joint audiences uh, and students moving back and forth that really wasn't something that had been fully uh, thought through as everybody worked on their individual plans. Uh, and then looking at the connections to the adjacent residential neighborhoods, that it's not an isolation and while we are looking at an area that's really attractive to the broader White Bear Lake community and beyond, uh, it's also important that we are connecting to the residential neighborhoods and that they're really an asset uh, to them. So those are some of the opportunities uh, that were looked at. When we looked at vehicle circulation, uh, there was a little bit more on the issues side when we looked at that. So concern about the parking congestion or just the general traffic congestion congestion that happens with a high school campus. Also when you have theater performances, where does everybody leave all throughout the same exit trying to get onto Highway 61. Um, also looking at the potential roadway modifications on 7th and 8th uh, related to the rush line. Uh, and just the idea of shared parking, that conversation had been started between a few of the organizations, uh, but making sure that those conversations continued. Uh, so when we met, our first part of the process is to have those conversations, understand the issues, understand 
kind of the vision for each organization. Uh, and then we moved forward to identifying strategies. Um, the strategies we grouped into four areas, uh, network and circulation, so the idea of what are the physical improvements to allow vehicular and pedestrian movement through the area, placemaking, the idea that you know you're in the arts district or you know you're in White Bear, uh, the idea of land use and redevelopment, so what are the things the city can do to help support redevelopment or in intensification of uses, and then just the, orga the overall organizational framework. Uh, what is the framework that could support uh, an enhancement and further partnership and collaboration amongst the agency partners? So I'm gonna at high level talk about each of the strategies, uh, starting with uh, network and circulation. One of the elements that, that really goes into what I talked about of connecting between the campuses and the residential neighborhood is really improving the east-west connections for pedestrians. As you can see, that's focused both on the high school campus area as well as through the individual arts organizations camp, uh, connections. So it's something that we need to look at on an east-west basis. Um, throughout the presentation, you'll notice some precedent photos generally in the bottom right. Um, those are trying to give examples of where other communities have done that and what that might look like. Um, and it's just kind of an inspiration um, to make sure that we kind of can understand what we're talking about. Uh, if we look at traffic calming, so the idea of there are strategies we can use on the north-south streets, so Division and Bald Eagle, to really make it feel uh, that traffic isn't moving quite as fast, to make it feel like people can move through the area. Um, and so the idea, and because we're doing something um, that is in the arts district, using artistic elements instead of just traditional traffic calming elements, so the idea of uh, the colorful, artistic, creative pavement markings, creating areas for visual installation. So it's another way to do what we have done in other areas maybe of the community, but do it in a slightly different way that helps create that sense of place. Uh, we also looked at uh, improving the roadway circulation to provide more space for pedestrians on Long Avenue. Uh, that's something that obviously will take a little bit more conversation between Ramsey County and the city, um, but really that's an opportunity um, and there will be improvements at some point in the future, so really taking into consideration pedestrian movement uh, to try and provide that connectivity. Uh, and then really recognizing that uh, rather than just having traditional pedestrian crossings, that there are opportunities to make it more visible uh, across division as we try and connect the campuses. Uh, that also could provide an opportunity if you were ever going to have uh, an event that crossed all of the campuses that you kind of have that focal point of where you could focus um, if you were gonna close part of the street just for an afternoon and people could be moving back and forth. It kind of gives that sense of where this all occurs. Um, so those are some ideas for things to help improve movement. Uh, and then the last one is addressing pedestrian connectivity on both sides of Highway 61. Um, we did do a presentation as part of this uh, series of presentations. Uh, I did present uh, to the arts organizations similar slides, similar presentations, and one of the comments that they had that Highway 61 is one of the things they're probably the most concerned about. Uh, our study didn't focus on solving that problem. That was probably beyond the scope of what I can do with all of the other agencies and jurisdictions involved. But we do have in this uh, study the idea of really trying to improve those pedestrian connections on both sides so that people understand if they're in downtown how you move up uh, to the arts district or if you're in the arts district how do you maybe park there and go down and eat and come back. Um, and so you can see uh, the blue areas are kind of the primary pedestrian routes and the green are opportunities uh, to really address those issues. So if we move on to place, oh, Mine skipped over that. Uh, develop a wayfinding plan. Um, that is the idea of both on the pedestrian scale and the vehicular scale that we make sure that um, we c direct people in the right area. Um, also use that in a way that reflects the arts district itself. Uh, and then also using potentially landmarks like the Rush Line Station or uh, the depot or things that people can visually see to kind of help make that connection. All right, placemaking. 
One element of placemaking is uh, to really look at activating as much as we can the parking lot, the streets, other in-between spaces for, park, uh, for events or gathering. Uh, one of the things that we typically do right now is you know, you create a parking lot and there is some leftover space that could be created a little bit more uh, thoughtfully for events. Uh, or the idea of using the visual connection so that that helps people understand the fact that they're moving towards the art districts or towards downtown. Um, and we have some examples of what that could look like. Uh, as we do that, if you move into that area, um, one of the things that needs to be thought about is how do you support events or pop-up events, uh, so things like Wi-Fi, outlets, those types of elements also need to be thought about. It's, um, in, it's helpful to have the spaces kind of identified, but also supportive elements um, that help that work. Then the next element is enhancing the streetscape. Uh, so things like pedestrian lighting, pavement, surfaces, seating and gathering, landscaping, uh, those elements that we traditionally talk about as streetscape. And again, the idea of doing them related to the arts or something that partners with the arts organization uh, in order to make that connection. We do have an example of how uh, a streetscape could be transformed to support events. Uh, this example, we just used Long Avenue as an example, but the idea of having something that's really visual, that you can see that there's a sidewalk moving through the location, that you could have events um, that could happen on the street, that you're not doing maybe uh, the curb in the same way, you're doing something that works um, and is really uh, flexible to have events in the area. <coughs> The next action or strategy that we talked about is the idea of creating public access to the wetland area. It is located just north of the White Bear Center for the Arts, so there is an opportunity to actually uh, transform it for use. I don't think we thought about transforming it significantly to an active space, but more of a passive space. Um, it would be an opportunity uh, to have artists design the space or students involved with designing the space, um, but also a place for people to go out and use as inspiration for their arts. One element that we found as we reviewed precedent of arts districts in other places uh, throughout the country is the idea that there is some type of district branding effort that happens, some way that you know that it's a cohesive district. So these are some examples and there's different ways of doing it. Obviously it could be uh, partner or organization led, it could be something that you have through artist or student design, uh, but this is something that can be used throughout different mediums and could be a strategy to help really elevate the recognition of this area as an arts district. And similarly, another strategy to help really focus on placemaking is the idea of an artist in residence program. Uh, I know the White Bear Center for the Arts has used artists in residence for other strategies, but one way to do it is to use it for placemaking. So how can they recommend or build relationships with downtown or the other, the school district, ways of incorporating things that are visible in the streetscape in the public realm as opposed to things that might be just inside uh, the arts organizations. Uh, so this is some things that have happened in other places in the, in the country and as a way to help build uh, the momentum for an arts district when one is getting created. Now we're moving on to land use and redevelopment, and as a planner, this is a section off, my, you know, after my own heart, so I won't belabor it too long. I'll try not to spend too much time on it. Uh, but for land use, uh, when we looked at the land use uh, part of it, there's been a lot of transformation in this neighborhood already. Uh, so we were trying to find strategies that help to provide flexibility, help to provide more opportunity for property owners to use their sites as opposed to targeting significant redevelopment or trying to transform it significantly farther. So a lot of these strategies are a little bit more uh, behind the scenes, things that the city could do to help provide that. Uh, one opportunity is to create an overlay district that allows more flexibility. So there are things that we could do to, um, for example, lowering setback limitations, exploring artist uh, accessory dwelling units or artists in residency housing and applying it in a different way than you do in the rest of the city. Uh, modifying home occupation requirements. So again, artists are more supported if they want to live in this area. Uh, and then also looking at any development or redevelopment being required to include semi-public gathering spaces, artists, 
um, public art, replacement of affordable housing units. So one strategy to really support this area and its continued evolution is to look at an overlay district. Uh, we suggested that rather than a specific zoning district, because there are unique features within the neighborhood that it may not make sense to do one specific zoning district. Uh, also, there are opportunities for adaptive reuse. Uh, some of the formal commercial spaces that are on the edges, depending upon what the property owners are interested in, could be great spaces for artists. Uh, there also is something called an accessory commercial unit that is um, trending in the country, and that's the idea of instead of an accessory dwelling unit, is the idea that you have a commercial space, a small commercial space um, that's right next to or part of a, a home, and it provides kind of that live work idea without having a multi-use building. It's just a house that has an accessory commercial space, and you can see some examples in the photos where um, it's kind of that transformation, and I know you have some areas in the community where there is that conversion uh, between residential and com uh, commercial. And then also the idea of can existing housing be live work or have retail studio gallery spaces. So that's taking a look at how the zoning is applied and making some changes to it. And then there is also some precedence uh, in the country for using something called uh, arts easement. Uh, so areas where you have more significant front yard setbacks or sometimes the street yard setback on a corner lot, sometimes they're bigger in certain houses and some places have allowed something called an arts easement where you're able to use that um, to art activate the public realm and it's similar to a regular, a, typical easement where it defines how it can be used, but it's another way of using that setback area in a way that reinforces that you're in an arts district. Um, so that's another example. There are a few examples in the country for that, um, so something else that could be thought of. And then developing tools to encourage mixed use and creative spaces. Uh, I think, as all of you know, it's complicated to work with a city. Um, and artists are wonderful, and wonderful in what they do, but sometimes the expertise is not there to try and figure out how to work through our bureaucracy. Um, and so there is probably more the city could do uh, to make that part a little bit clearer um, and to try and develop strategies that really help. Um, and that's any any city, obviously. Um, we're all experts at what we're experts at, and it's hard when you're in a different realm. And so this is an area that um, the city could probably enhance and provide more information and, and a little bit more support um, as needed for zoning and permitting, because that's something that probably the intricacies aren't uh, as well known. Then the last uh, strategy is organization framework. Um, this one is really more geared to how do we move beyond the study that had been concluded. And these were just some ideas and precedents that we had gathered about how did communities move from an idea to the actualization of an arts district? How did they get to be well known? Most of the precedents that we found really looked at some type of organization that was beyond the individual organizations and where they really worked cohesively together. Uh, that's helpful for the branding, that's helpful for the ongoing events, that's helpful for making sure um, that they are working together and kind of get the marketing. Um, so that's an idea. I think that's not surprising and, and it's always challenging to do, um, but that is one element that would further the arts district forward if there was an interest in that. Uh, also, even if that organization wouldn't um, occur, there are opportunities to do more of social media and branding campaign to gather ideas for the district. Uh, we saw some precedents where arts organizations had a website that really was devoted to the potential attendees of events and then also the potential artists and ways to generate excitement and ideas and interest for people to be in the community. And then organize, organizing one or more public events, and clearly the arts district and the arts organizations are doing that. They had one this fall that was a collaboration, and they can continue to build on that. Um, but we just had some other ideas, and I think continuing that on is important if the arts district is going to look, be looked at as a kind of a cohesive area. And also partnering with the school as it makes sense um, to kind of broaden the understanding beyond just this area to the larger region and community. 
And then the last part is connecting downtown business resources to this area. Um, there may be opportunities or interest uh, in kind of partnering a little bit more with storefront windows or re blank or vacant spaces. Um, there are places where they try and make those connections and so the artists are instrumental in transforming a bit uh, what those uh, retail spaces would look like or what those uh, storefront displays would look like and that actually links back to that artist in residence idea of having someone that can kind of help frame that program and work through those partnerships, but that's another idea of what we saw as we looked at precedents across the country. And then funding and partnership opportunities. There are arts uh, opportunities. I, we did do a brief research on our database of funding opportunities, um, but the challenge is you have to have a project and you kind of have to know what you're looking for to figure out what the opportunities are. But obviously there are opportunities throughout the country um, and so there may be funding and partnership opportunities. Generally we found that's a little bit easier when there's an organization or a clear organization that's the leader in that. Um, but it is something that is a possibility if uh, as this moves forward in its, uh, in its evolution. And then we also talked about creating sub-districts. Okay, that's my land use hat again, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sub-districts. Um, but the idea of right now, if we look at the comprehensive plan, um, the downtown kind of has two sides, the east and the west side, and so is there a value in branding? Is it the whole arts district? Is it, do we talk about downtown as the whole area? And then we kind of have sub areas. I think we struggled a little bit with the idea that this was totally a separate um, because we really want to build that collaboration and that energy between um, and so how do we do that? So we just had some suggestions of how do we describe that? Um, so something to think about and it doesn't necessarily need to be the zoning side. That's that's for us to figure out separately um, But that's something to think about So next steps um, to kind of circle all the way back, when the study was started, it was really undertaken to facilitate the conversation. Uh, there wasn't a specific end goal, there wasn't a specific um, report or plan. It was we needed to bring the organizations together, see what ideas were out there, see what would work, what is specific um, to the area. The, as I said, the discussions found a lot of common values. I think there were some things that are already early kind of wins that happened through that collaboration and that can continue. Uh, beyond these, there haven't been specific steps identified. Uh, we do have some possible steps that are listed. You know, there could be more collaboration on special events, sharing up ideas in upcoming planning efforts. So hopefully this study and the strategies would be something that would be used as the foundation when the rush line stationary planning would happen or if there was a downtown mobility study. Uh, smaller and master plan is a possibility if we wanted to elevate it to the next level um, and adopt an actual plan that would identify strategies, be more specific on land use and implementation and how uh, the city could move forward. And then obviously exploring some of those zoning changes. We had identified uh, the value of having a neighborhood meeting. So there is a neighborhood meeting scheduled for Monday. Um, and the intention of that, there was a letter sent to the neighborhood uh, to let them know about the neighborhood meeting. It will be open house format. So people will come in and be able to look at this information in kind of a board format. I will do a brief presentation to just orient folks. I find that's helpful um, that people can kind of hear the overview and what we're doing there this evening. And then on Monday, November 8th, uh, we're I'm scheduled to present to the White Bear Lake School Board. So um, the intention is that every uh, partner has the opportunity to hear the same information and learn about what the results of the study and then each organization kind of, kind of think about what their next steps might be relative to the study. So I know I speedily went through there. I was told 15 to 20 minutes, so hopefully you followed Good through. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> uh, hopefully it wasn't too fast, but I'm happy to go back and answer questions and um, provide more information. Council Member Bean. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is my ward. It looks very exciting. Good. Um, I uh, look forward to seeing how, how things um, uh, continue to, to, uh, to uh, play out. Um, as I was um, walking my ward this, uh, the, the, this, these last two months, because I'm up for re-election, uh, one of my constituents who lives in that area brought up the, uh, the idea of a pedestrian bridge. And when you were speaking of contact with downtown, I, I, I was envisioning in my mind a, a bridge, you know, that 
would would be you know artistic in, in nature and I was just that's something I would like to explore to see if there's any possibility if, if it's one of is it, is it workable is there space for it two is it affordable and three would it be um, the right way to connect from the, the district to the downtown I hope that's something I don't not to add to the workload of the downtown mobility study, but it kind of feels like that would be something related to that. Sorry, Paul, is that okay to say? Yeah. Oh, good. Um, I think it's something that I, we heard from the arts organization that that was something that was important, and I'm sure it's come, it was in, in conversation. Just because we were looking at more of how do we do the arts, um, that's a whole big discussion and so we didn't encompass that in this study but I certainly think it's valuable to have that conversation because people don't always understand all of those things you brought up so I was excited to see you say that like the cost and do we have the space the you know where do you touch down and the grade change and all of that um, that's why we have engineers because I'm just dangerous <laughs> to say all of those things <laughs> Well, I have to say one thing for those of us that were on the council when we uh, came, the Highway 61 project was done and we came up with the Arts District flags. Little did we know it was going to turn into this, but it's quite exciting to see this moving forward. But we kind of hoped there was going to be this kind of a push somewhere along the way. But that was back in the infancy. That was before anything had been built over there. So. Yeah. Council Member Edberg. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so, as you outline some opportunities and possibilities, and that's pretty much all they are at the moment, and that's good, that's, yep. um, do we have enough core, so I'm, I'm wrestling in my head, do we have enough core arts activity among the two slash three, org, well, two facilities, three organizations, um, that are there, is that enough to call it a district by itself? Is it an extension, an outer, you know, an outer ring of the downtown uh, area? Um, and from your experience with other communities, do we, I'm not saying we want more, but is, if we were to pursue that, does that require more? Or do we have enough? Or how do we think about that kind of center of gravity mm -hmm. and, and how we think about that? So one element of arts districts is they, for a while, generally happen organically, kind of how you started, but there's probably some more organic evolution that needs to happen. I think from our experience, the city could probably do some things to provide more flexibility and more openness and start to kind of communicate that. Um, it is a fairly small area. I don't think you have the supportive arts businesses and things, but that's going to have to naturally evolve um, in order for that to happen. I think we struggled with the idea of does it make sense to call it its own thing? Does it need to be part of downtown, but some of that is a comfort level also with the downtown and how they think of themselves. Uh, and so we can't just, I think, impose something like that. Right. Um, our hope was, again, kind of that slide of, it'd be nice if we could think about it as a cohesive because there are, is that synergy of arts back to the downtown, moving back and forth. Um, but that's part of the conversation that probably needs to continue to happen. Uh, most of the arts districts we looked at were, as precedents, you know, the ones that you well know are going to be, there's going to be more that's happening there, but they all had to start someplace. Uh, and so trying to do these little steps that we can see, and some of the things that we identified are things you can do, and some of the things you identified aren't things you can do. They're things that those organizations need to take upon themselves to do. Um, so it is going to take each partner kind of doing what is within their realm to kind of move everything forward. So where does the accountability for shepherding those conversations, where does that, where does that lie? That is a challenging question because <laughs> it, it is something where I think you can support it. You can certainly be more of a leader, but there's always that balancing act that cities have of being too forceful and 
not doing what is deemed enough. And I think that's something you're going to have to figure out as we move forward and kind of check in. I think one thing we did talk about at the end is next steps is a more regular check-in um, to help with that accountability or that reminder of we did this and what can we do and how do we move forward. I think right now I only presented to the arts organizations three weeks ago. I'd have to look. Um, and that was the first time they had seen that and they probably need more time than um, to understand and think about it. I think as a city, most of the things I presented are things that are either very familiar or somewhat familiar. You have a context with which to understand what I'm talking about and how you fit in. I think there's a little bit different on how they think about, well, what is it out of that that we can do? I could continue with one, one more question, Madam Sure, Mayor. please. So, you're making a presentation to us. You have presented to the arts organizations. You will be presenting to the school district. That's good. You interacted with the downtown association, the um, uh, chamber. Uh, kind of, what's the what's the nature of that part of the conversation and the the exposure of those interests? Um, yeah. We haven't, that was not included as part of the study. I th certainly think staff, um, you know, they are empowered, they, they know all this information as well as I can do, so they can uh, move that forward or those are conversations that we can be a part of as that outside party um, as well, because sometimes that's helpful in those conversations. I think those are conversations that probably need to happen. Um, it's just the timing and how it works together and there's a lot of layers of organizations and you also have a lot of planning efforts um, that maybe are happening and for sure are happening and trying to pull this all together in a way that um, works. So I think those are things that I would recommend to have those conversations. Madam. Council Member Jones. Yeah, the, the aspect of who's hurting the cats. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. and, and some cats are going to be faster, some cats are not. Some cats are going to be lazy, some cats are going to... And, and that's, that's my biggest fear. I see this moving s faster than the residents, the community uh, would, would see the benefit of. I'm for this. I picture slices, I see the bean in Chicago, I see parts of Edina, I see parts of you know Grand Avenue. I like the idea of the zoning to give the residents that are there. Uh, they've got to have a huge say. I was glad to. That was one of my questions. I was glad to see you address that. So that uh, the, the the ability to make connection. I think the easy one is to the the school campus. That's that's obviously easy. The tougher one is to the goal would be to make the connection, not a division. But connecting 61. I'd say we could go under. I mean, I know it always sounds creepy, but <laughs> it's half the cost and it's half the real estate because you don't have to go as high to get the, the ADA compliant things. It's not creepy, we can paint flowers on it. And lastly, with an artist in residence program on it, I mean, would that person be able to go throughout the city, go out throughout our community, not only create art in this district, but elsewhere in our community. And one of the narrow things that I'd look at is could they paint green bears white, for example, since our city <laughs> can't get that done. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm serious bears? about the... Where are the green? I don't, I'm familiar with these green Go bears. up to 35E and 96 someday. Um, <laughs> but I'm serious about outside of the outside of this district too. You know. So the artists in residence can be whatever the organization who sponsors it makes it to be. It doesn't have to be just about the downtown. Now, if it's done by an organization that's specific for the arts district, I would anticipate that it would be more focused that, but it's certainly something that could be looked at broader. My hope, would, you know, one of our ideas had been the idea of they're there to kind of help with that connection to the downtown businesses and the retail and how does that, could that work together or doing the public art those types of things. Call it an aspect of wayfinding slash marketing to, right. it's a way to point back to. Right. So one comment that I had, just because I had assumed, because I know bridges are really challenging and tunnels are also challenging, mm -hmm. that that might not be feasible. There's a lot of jurisdictions mm -hmm. uh, that have to be involved and there's the money and all of that. So when we were thinking about the connection between the arts district, uh, it's not great, I admit it. Right, it not great it to go south on this side 
of 61. But the, that goes back to me in the placemaking and the streetscape that there would be a way if we were thoughtful and creative to add elements that so you knew you were going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And you could cross the parking lot. I'm not saying it's ideal and would I ever design it that way, but there are things we could probably do to help make that a actual path that feels like a connection if that 61 bridge isn't possible right. or it's so many years out, there are little things that could be done before then. You know, if you know there's art along there and every, I'm making this up, half a block, I can see it. I must be still going in the right direction. There's signage, there's banners, there's art. Okay, this is how I'm gonna get to the depot or downtown. Mm -hmm. There probably are strategies that we haven't thought about that could either be interim or could be permanent steps that enhance it as well. Um, and we tried to talk about that. I don't know if they come out as strongly, um, but I think that's one thing maybe the mobility study or kind of in combination we think about is if we can't do that or we can't do it for a lot of years, there's probably things we could do to be better and to be clear that that works. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A question for Mr. Coppy, maybe Long, Long, is it Long Avenue? Is that the name of the is that our street? County road. That is county. That's what I figured, because I drove it the other day and it's in rough shape. Yeah, the, they're waiting. So, I mean, when, so it's when they do that, we gotta work with them. Because um, I like some of these ideas. I mean, just when we redo the street or when they redo the street, there's a lot of creativity could go into that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's obvious. I mean, we gotta not let that opportunity go, but it's not our street. Mm -hmm. Which I'm, I'm not surprised by because it is such a bad shape. You know? uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, Long Avenue is one roadway that uh, <coughs> Ramsey County would like to do a turn back on. Oh. Um, some of the issues that surround that is the right of way along the, uh, if you really look at where the road is situated, a lot of the road is outside of the right of way within the railroad right of way. Is it? <laughs> so there's some things that have to get no fixed well, before we would. The railroads are easy to work. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, so we would want Ramsey County to work out some of those issues and figure that out before we just took it over. Otherwise, kind of. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> it could become a big issue for the city if we just took it over as is. So right. that's why they've been doing minimal maintenance until we figure out what we're going to do. How do you uh, make all of the repairs and make it look nice and pretty before they give it to us? Mm -hmm. Or they give us the money, right? <laughs> uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, as far as uh, what it looks like, that's really up to us and the county uh, in a turn back agreement. Uh, many roadways are turned back in a condition. Um, uh, such as uh, Councilmember Edberg describes that it's done, it's complete. Other times we want more flexibility as far as to uh, do what we want to do with it. Uh, maybe put more money into it so it might be uh, better off under city control when we rebuild it. So um, in that case, oftentimes they will give the cash equivalent uh, for us to do that work. Well, you've given us lots to think about, <laughs> but it's an exciting thing to think about. And it's exciting to present it to all of you and have you hear it. So, please. Uh, oh, Member Edberg. So, as you have shared the, these ideas with others, and as they've been percolating along, percolating along, where are the folk? Where are the places where folks identify tensions or rubs or the hell no we won't go? Um, where does that pop up? I mean, we're talking um, the multi-block area. It's relatively new in its conceptualization. It's um, a lot of it. Um, we are not in a place where we have settled patterns of, and whatever we do have is likely to get unsettled for a while. What, what's that dynamic look like as you and colleagues and others involved have kind of put these uh, balls up in the air? Well, we'll know more next week after the neighborhood meeting. Oh. We'll hear from the residents at that point and see what the concerns are. and. Uh, the, we're designing that um, open house to really have an opportunity for people to write comments on the board, to put dots on things they like, to express concerns, because I think that's the most helpful. We don't want it to just be informative. We want to actually hear what the concerns, the questions are. Uh, when we presented to the arts organizations, um, I think some of it was just some, uh, one of it was the crossing of Highway 61. There was a lot of discussion about that. Um, there was some discussion and concern about just um, 
the change that was coming and, and whether or not how that would look and how that impacted their organization. So for example, if there was changes to circulation or if there was changes to how movement would occur. I think there was still a lot of um, thinking that was happening when I presented as I referenced. Um, a lot of these ideas are new and some of these ideas are maybe not things that they've thought about. Um, and so I don't know that we have the clear answer yet and I'm assuming there's more conversation that staff has with the organizations and their staff and we'll probably continue to hear feedback um, from those conversations. But I I'm, don't have a lot yet uh, because I think things are still percolating out there for everyone. Yeah. Thank you. And I was just gonna add that um, we'd be happy to provide you copies of the PowerPoint as well as just let you know a press release will be going out tomorrow and we will be posting the PowerPoint on the city's website in advance of Monday's neighborhood meeting and the following week's school board presentation. So we are doing our best to get the word out to those in the community that this has been completed. Good. Sounds like you have it covered then. We hope. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll, we'll see what the next step's gonna be. Thank right. you. It was a pleasure to see you all this evening. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right, moving on to 5A, resolution certifying delinquent charges related to the municipal utility.